And we're like back with more of the Shack News Awards 2023 deliberations. We're going to chat about Switch ports. The best Switch port of the year 2023. And here are our nominees. Vampire Survivors. Suica Game, also known as Watermelon Game. Power Wash Simulator. Dave the Diver. Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. And... I think a lot of people may have forgotten that this even happened, but Borderlands 3 came to Switch. So those are the nominees. Uh, who would like to get things started with Vampire Survivors? Anyone want to chat about Vampire Survivors? I can. Go for it, Greg. I mean, like, this game came out, like, to huge reception, but it wasn't on the Switch. And it was like, wow, this yeah. game would be really great on Nintendo Switch. And they eventually got it on the Switch, and... It's been my savior at airports and traveling like all year. Nothing like TJ said, like it's a, it, nothing destroys your time more than vampire survivors, whether it's on a plane or at a, in, in the terminal, whatever. It's, it's been a great port. I hadn't noticed any, any technical limitations with it or any, cause it's a pretty low bearing game in terms of graphic ability, but it just, it's just, it's a good port. Just, it's, it's a good port plays smooth and it's simple. And yeah. yeah. Well, it is load like, it's 16 or 8 bit sprites or whatever. There are a lot of enemies on screen at the same mm -hmm. time. Uh, so there is a potential that it could have run like Bud on Switch, but it doesn't. So that's part of this category is like, does it run well on Switch? Because we've seen some ports on Switch that are just god awful. Uh, so I think it's a very uh, solid nomination. And Vampire Survivors is a delightful game. It was that. Last year, it was definitely one of those games that I think we would have put on the game that should be on Switch list if if we had a little bit more time for the nomination processes. Uh, so when it came this year, perfect. It was just a a perfect uh, port. And now it's getting all the the support that all these all the other versions on platforms are getting now. So it's kind of we've kind of reached parity across all the platforms except for mobile, I believe. But yeah, if this thing can run on a smartphone, it can run on a Switch, and, and they did it well. Uh, so next up, Donovan, let's talk about Watermelon Game. Let's. That game is addictingly fun. Um, originally launched last year in Japan, um, and then came to our eShop just a couple months ago. But very simple, like falling and merging puzzle game, but combining fruit. Um, very cute. Excellent Switch game because it's like, a deep time single you can easily play that game for two hours also it's very very battery friendly which is something i think that i consider with games that i play on switch um and it's just great it's just a delight it's just a fun game that i always up one and play at least a couple rounds every day or so and this is like one thing i want to mention about this why i think it's an excellent port to switch specifically is that this was a very successful mobile game and the mobile game is rather minimal. Uh, there is no record keeping like that that exists on Switch. Like Switch tells you your here's your best all time score, here's your best score of the day, here's your best score of the week. So there's really good record keeping on the Switch version. On top of that, they added this delightful song that plays on the, in the Switch version that's not on the mobile browser. I feel like the presentation on the Switch is better. It shows you the fruit evolutions on the right. Uh, where they didn't really yep. have the screen real estate to do that on the mobile version of the game. So it's it's a port that makes almost every aspect of the game better, including the actual art style, uh, where the fruit even looks better on, on the Switch graphically. It's a minimal mm -hmm. game, but it, it's one of those, you know, oh, I could play this for three minutes, right? But then you end up looking up and you've been playing it for two hours. It's become my, like, it's the perfect way for me to wind down my night after F-099 pisses me off by, you know, killing me or dying or whatever. <laughs> so, like, I'll play, like, you know, an hour of F-099 and I'll wind down with, like, 30 minutes in, in Watermelon game. Mm -hmm. Getting the Watermelon feels great, right? So there's a sense of accomplishment when you do it. I've learned that you can merge two Watermelons, and now that's my White Whale. Uh, the game has outstanding replayability. And yeah, I think it's like any good puzzle game, you're playing against yourself. 
right? You're trying to outdo what you did last time. You're trying to make a cool combo. And I think there's something about the physics that we should mention too, Donovan. Like, it's... The way that yeah. fruit, like, slide off of each other and stuff, it just... I think that's part of the magic of the game. Where these combos and these matches happen... It's not randomly, but they kind of feel random at times. And I just think it's a... It's unique in a puzzle game the way that that feels. Not to mention, it's not creates like... a whole new layer to gameplay, right? Because like you'll be looking at the the board, you're staring at it, and you're like, yeah, if I put this here, this will do that. And then sometimes you'll drop something, and something will go flying in another direction. And you're like, oh, well, now it's it's in gravity's hands. I'm just gonna watch this all play out as all yeah. this fruit goes flying. And sometimes and it's a, just... a happy little accident. You know? That's like never the case in like a Doctor Mario or like a Tetris scenario. And I have to compare it right. to those games and like Bejeweled and those things or like Bubble Bobble, but it's like those games, but that physics mechanic really makes it different, and that shines on Switch. Like, the way that they present it, I just think is outstanding. I think it also brings uh, back so. hoax, uh, harkens back to time where, like, you know, match three games were fun, because we've had, like, two decades of, like, just terrible, this predatory, awful... It's, 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 it's match, match two, right? Game. It's match two? Yeah. Sorry, ma ma match game. It's, it's been a while since we've had one that's just like that's fun and lighthearted, not behind a million paywalls, not behind a timer, not behind like weird predatory stuff you see in a match game. Normally, it's just a straightforward, mm -hmm. fun little cute puzzle game. Kind of a breath of fresh air in the genre. <laughs> and affordable. It's only what three dollars for the game, uh, I believe, on eShop, which is outstanding for a price. And they, I think, they said that it's already sold four million units on Switch, so it's it's been received very well. Uh, they, let's move on to our next <clears throat> nominee, Power Wash Simulator. This is definitely one of those games when we saw it, we're like, this should be on Switch. Uh, I put a lot of time into Power Wash Simulator last year. It's, it's weird how relaxing that Zen. game is. It's pretty Zen. Yeah. Um, unless you're doing the amusement park one. <laughs> the merry-go-round. <laughs> That one sucks. Everything else is great. And the game has added a lot of different things. Like I think the DeLorean from Back to the Future is in it now. Uh, but yeah, there's there's fun things to watch. Uh, I believe Power Wash Sim has a crossplay. Fairly certain that's the case. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. always good to see a Switch game. It's nice to see a first-person Switch game that has multiplayer support. It doesn't happen that often. And uh, it runs on Switch pretty well. That's about all I have to say about it. But I do like Power Wash Sim. And anytime more people can play a game, that's a good thing. Uh, who would like to chat about Dave the Diver? Talk about wanna... Dave. Go for it. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that I'm always interested in is like, so I play a lot of PC games, not so many console games, um, even less handheld games. But it's always interesting to me when, like, Dave the Diver is something that, like, my wife saw me play and was like, what's that? Um, and was quite excited for that. And the fact that it's, uh, you know, now on the Nintendo Switch, which is the platform that she plays all of her games on, is actually pretty cool. And um, I think that that is something that always factors in for me, is that when a game... Like, she games, but she's not, like, a gamer in the sense of, like, we are, where we consume gaming all the time. Um, and so whenever something makes its way over the Nintendo Switch and it's appealing to her, it's always something that I find is, is really cool is when a game sort of steps outside of that bubble of gamers and, like, can be appealing to people who are maybe more casual in the gaming sphere. Um, aside from that, Dave the Diver is just a wonderful game to play. Um, even on Nintendo Switch, because it's it's even though there's some, I guess, tense moments underwater, it's still pretty chill and it fits with that sort of like casual fun. Um, I love running around doing the whole sushi run and pouring green tea for people um, <laughs> at night. And uh, I just think it's like it fits with my Switch vibe. It's like a chill, fun thing to do that doesn't stress me out. Uh, so it's very much like. Dave the Diver, Animal Crossing vibe kind of thing for me. So, Animal oh. Crossing, you say? Hmm. That's like good it's not like, like Animal out. Crossing. I'm saying that it gives me that relaxing... No, it fills that yeah. same space. That, that kind of like, 
you can be playing Animal Crossing while the TV's on, or you know, you can play Dave the Diver while something else is going. Yeah, I get what you're yeah. saying. Sorry, go ahead, Greg. I just said it also has that like addictive loop that me and my wife and I like, which is like you you know, you do the diving, you gather materials, you go back and you use them with those materials. Like that loop is very is very satisfying to like I grabbed all the mm-hmm. stuff and then you do something with that stuff, then you grab more stuff and it keeps on piling on. Really, kind of, it's not a dungeon of... crawler, but it has like a lot of the elements of a dungeon crawler, except gear. Instead of gear, it's fish. <laughs> the rotation of um of gameplay elements is really cool, in the sense that like in the morning and in the afternoon you go diving, um so you have like a morning dive, and then typically you'll have like an afternoon dive. But if you want to, you could go to the sushi bar, um in the afternoon. But then at night you go to the sushi restaurant and you're serving sushi. And my favorite part, I'm not even kidding, I fucking love to pour green tea in that game i don't know why it like it gives you good pour it gives you perfect pour it's just like i'm just i'm like if someone orders sushi i'm like eh, it's cool if someone orders green tea man that's the first person getting served because i can't wait to pour green tea <laughs> um but by the time you're done running the sushi restaurant it's time to go diving again and it's just like that continuous like it's always like alternating and you're never like grinding one aspect of the game too much and uh, i i think that's just a delightful game Nice. And it, it, it it was well received on Switch. It runs well, it plays well, which is another important part of this category that I have to stress because there are some real poopy Switch ports out there. This is not one of them. Uh, our next nominee, this one's kind of weird because it's Advance Wars 1 Plus 2 Reboot Camp. Uh, I mean... As long as the port is a stretch. Because it's kind of a remake-ish. It's not just one game. It's both games being ported. And they spent like a year trying to cartoonify it. Because this was going to launch... I believe it was originally going to launch last year. Like the week that the Ukraine-Russia war began. So Nintendo spent about a year to make it less warlike. But it's still a game about moving tanks into cities and blowing stuff up. It's hard. This game is insanely difficult. Uh, but yeah, like it's it's a game that came out on Switch this year from Nintendo. I, I it's not different enough from the original, I think, to call it yeah. a remake. I'm kind of uh, with you. Like it's it's a port, but like not a port. Like it's kind of mm-hmm. a remaster, but they went even further because of the Ukraine Russia stuff. Yeah, I don't really know where it falls. Like remaster more than anything, which I think is different than just a port, right? And, and we don't really have a remastered category. Like we have a remake category, we have port categories. We don't really have a remastered mm-hmm. category. And God, maybe we need one down the road because. Uh, maybe that's something we can talk about next year uh, because I do think there is a difference between a remake and a remaster it and a port uh, so yeah we wanted to mention it it's probably the only category we're going to mention it in I guess why it is similar to a port is that they didn't really take many liberties with the core gameplay it's still the same game as mm-hmm. it was on the Game Boy Advance it just looks different uh, and obviously there's these cutscenes that are made to make it look like I don't know, Teen Titans are at war or something, but yeah it's it's weird uh, it's a weird game that came out this year and then Borderlands 3 released on mm-hmm. uh, Nintendo Switch this year and this is more just a trend of mine in general, like I just think Switch desperately needs more FPS games and more good FPS games at that. Now, not everyone likes playing FPS games with a controller. I'm guessing a lot of people don't like playing FPS games with Switch Joy-Con controllers. But there is a group of us who enjoy playing FPS on the Switch just because of its handheld nature. Uh... Borderlands 3 is one of those games that you're going to spend 100 or 200 or 300 hours playing, so being able to play it in handheld, I think, does give it some value to me. Uh, And it plays well on on Switch. It it was reviewed pretty well. And, uh, yeah, shout out to Gearbox bringing uh, Borderlands 3 over to the Switch. 
And it's the ultimate edition, so I think you get some fun weapons and stuff if you get it. I think it just shows how far you can go with hardware when you optimize specifically for it and just hardcore focus on that optimization. You know, it's only one platform, right? One switch. All the specs are the same. There's no vo- there's no variable specs. And like being adults on the internet, it may be hard to like get this. I I mean I'm I'm guilty of it all the time, but like a lot of kids don't have a PC or an Xbox, but they may have a Switch. And so the the only way they can play Borderlands is on the Switch. And so yeah. it's like kind of cool because people are like, why do they port it? Just play it on PC. And it's like, well, not everyone has access to a PC. Some mom might have a Switch. And even if no they PC. do have a PC in the home, it might be the family's computer, and yeah. it might not have the best <laughs> GPU in it or true, the hard yeah. drive that you need to have a good experience playing a game. Like you know, not everyone has a gaming capable PC in their home. And Switch is still a very affordable gaming device in the yeah. grand screen. Some people things, might so. not want to sit at their desk all day. That's it, too. And then yeah. go home and sit at their desk all night. Exactly. That's how I feel about it, too. I feel like you're talking to me right now. I'm yeah. talking to all of us, mate. <laughs> it is. Like, we're, we're all at our desk all the time. So yeah. it is tough where it's like, oh, man, time to wind down by sitting in the exact same place. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that is that is a. I know Greg and I have talked about that over the years. Where we're both kind of chained to our computer desk, so when we want to chill, we want like a couch experience. And yeah, Switch is great for that. And I, I just have to stress, like being able to play a Borderlands game in handheld is is cool. It's pretty big. I, mean, I I felt that way when Doom got ported to Switch too. Like it wasn't yeah. for everyone, but it ran very well, and it was it scaled down to the Switch extremely well. Yeah, that's the whole thing. Like, you don't buy a game like Doom or even Borderlands if you want the most high fidelity experience, right? You want a really comfortable handheld experience. And yeah. Doom did that really well. It sounds like Borderlands 3 did also. Yeah, it's kind of like getting Skyrim on Switch or something, you know? You... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's just I mean, not I think it's, The Witcher 3. You think it just shows, like, the, I, the misconception the reports is that people, like, it goes, they spit out, they take the game, put it into some kind of, like, machine, it spits out the port, but no, there's, like, a ton of hand stuff that has to go into that, and, like... No, I heard it was just a checkbox in Unreal yeah, Engine. Yeah, just, 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 you yeah, just like, check just the trans- yeah. switch port button, click, yeah. and then step three, money, right? Yeah. No, it's actually super hard because uh, switch, switch and handheld runs at 720p most of the time. Uh, so if you made these assets that are in 4K or 1080p, you have to you have to scale them down. That's why there are all these port houses that exist for Switch because mm-hmm. a lot of that work is is done on the art side, yeah. uh, and it takes time, it takes effort, and uh, if you're a company that's working on something else at the time, it makes sense to work with a port house on this stuff. Uh, but yeah, those are our nominees for this category of best Switch port. How about we uh, go ahead and vote? What do you say? I'm going to start with Ozzy's absentee vote. Ozzy voted for Vampire Survivors. Mm -hmm. And uh, TJ voted for Suica Game. (laughs) Which is also known as Watermelon Game. So, I'm going to start with you, Denny. What you got? Uh, uh, There are some solid choices on this one. Uh, Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with Vampire Survivors. I feel like... uh... Got quite a few friends that are enjoying themselves a bit on the switch end, and I see why. So that's my choice. Yep, that's that's a great game, David. Yeah, um, Sweetie Game sounds really fun. I was checking out some videos of it, haven't got to try it yet, but that seems kind of up my alley. As does Dave the Diver, but Sweetie Game sounds like a, kind of a relaxing puzzle game, almost. Yes. It's like it I think it's gonna be nominated in the cozy category as well. But yeah, it's like a nice chill game. And they really did a lot with the Switch port when you compare it to the original. Uh that was on mobile. Donovan. Yeah, I'm also a team Suica game. Oh wait, Greg. I'm gonna do Borderlands three. Mm-hmm. Bill. I'm with Dave. The diver or the with, person? You, you, you're not with David Craddock. Not you're David, with Dave. Dave oh. Sorry, Dave. The diver. I'm Dave. Yeah. Identity theft is a <laughs> Man, real that was problem, be Bill. A cool way to vote, and I screwed it up. I'm like, <laughs> are you with David or Dave? Either way, I got it. You're with Dave the diver. Yeah, that's solid switch port. 
And I, I like that the time from launch on other platforms to Switch, I like that it's shrinking in a lot of cases. It's not like a year later or two years later. Or I don't know how many years later in the case of Witcher 3. But Witcher 3 is the opposite of this award because it runs like butt on Switch. Um, Sam? Um, maybe one of you guys can answer my question. With, uh, what, with Suica Game... Are there like challenges outside of just getting like the daily high score, like um, there are in Vampire Survivors, where you can kind of progressively unlock stuff? I mean, just because like I'm tossing up between the two of them right now, so it's kind of like a uh, daily. Outside of the leaderboard, no. Okay. There's nothing like oh you did this. There's no like achievements. Nintendo Switch doesn't really have an achievement system built into it either. Yeah, not even... necessarily achievements, but you know how yeah. in Vampire Survivors you've got that progression. That you there is no on. progression yeah. in okay. Suica game. It's All like right. it's like Tetris in that All sense. Right. Cool. All right, that that helps me then. I I'll, I'll go for Vampire Survivors uh, mm-hmm. purely because it's got that more replay value that I personally engage with probably a little bit more. Now this is the guy whose opinion I wanted to know because <laughs> he has a show called Steve Tendo that I I think it's. Are you at episode four hundred? You're really close. Three ninety nine is his last tonight. Tonight tonight, tonight will be four hundred. Well, congratulations, Steve. That is an awesome achievement of Thank doing you. it for Shaq News on a high level. But you're kind of the, the, the Nintendo expert. You're Steve Tendo. So I'm curious, what's your best Switch port of the year? This is a tough one for me. I'm torn between Vampire Survivors and Suica Game. But yeah. I've heard you talking about Suica Game since every deliberation we've ever done this year. <laughs> so uh, I, I think I think I have to give the edge to Suica Game, but it's very close. Awesome. And uh, yeah, I could really mess things up here <laughs> if I want to, but Do I it. don't. I don't. <laughs> as much as I love Vampire Survivors, I invested my time in that game on the Xbox Game Pass version. And that, like, when you invest time in Vampire Survivors, your progression is tied to that save, right? If the Switch port could have figured out a way for cross-progression, it would have gotten my vote. Because I could have taken what I had done elsewhere over to the Switch. I don't want to sit down and play Vampire Survivors for another 200 hours. So, that's why I'm not giving it my uh, my vote. I'm going to vote for Suica Game. And these are both very good, and I think we've brought up Vampire Survivors in several categories because these games are similar in that they're both pretty affordable games, uh, but Vampire Survivors has been around for a year now, and it's materially better than it was a year ago. This isn't necessarily about how improved it is. It's just about the Switch port in general. Vampire Survivors is at parity across all the platforms, where Suica Game is like materially better on Switch than it is on its previous iterations. So that's why I'm voting for Suica Game. And that's why it is our Shaq News Award winner for best Switch port of the year 2023. Congratulations.